Hello everyone. So, I'll be recording this and streaming it live, so I'm not sure if anyone's watching live, but if you're, hello. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat. I'll try to answer them in the process. And what are we going to do today? So, we are going to hopefully um, pre-processed uh, frames for uh, Bubble Nebula and we'll start with, um, as I have already calibrated the uh, flat files, I'll just skip that and uh, start with calibration of, uh, of the light frames. <coughs> naming scheme it's for calibrated files I need to select different uh, master doc uh, for uh, 20 minute subs the bias one is already selected uh, I have uh, these um, process icons uh, made for my, my uh, new projects so it's just faster like that Thirty-six files, so and uh, twenty-minute uh, subs. So, oh, and one more thing: uh, as uh, these uh, things are processor-intensive, uh, 
there might be some issues with the stream so uh, i hope uh, the audio is not uh, cutting very much if it is let me know so 36 files and 20 minutes subs uh, means that we have 12 hours of uh, imaging here alone so and then we have um, all three files as well so I think I have less of those I 18 here. Seven here, so 25. Uh, so 12 hours plus 25. So around 20 and uh, 20 hours and 20 minutes of uh, integration. But as I already reviewed uh, some of these uh, subframes before, I know that not all of them are good. three files and as we have uh, this image uh, I have imaged these uh, during different nights I have uh, separate flat files for them same dark same folder them sometimes it takes like two or more hours the pre-processing alone so I am hopeful that it won't take that long with this one as I don't have that many subs um, yeah Okay, so uh, image calibration is done. So uh, during image calibration, we what we do is uh, calibrate the uh, images uh, with the uh, master bias, master dot, and master flat. So flat is used for removing the desk modes, uh, vignetting, and master bias is used for removing uh, uh, fixed pattern noise, uh, amp glow, etc. Mass rock uh, with my sensor is mostly used only for removing um, hot pixels. Okay, so next thing we want to do is do a, run a cosmetic correction for all the uh, calibrated subs. And uh, why we want to do that is because we have a lot of uh, hot pixels and uh, cosmetic correction helps us to reduce them and the amount of them. Just select the 20 minute arc. Um, I usually just use around uh, signal of 3, so it's not that high. I also always use uh, uh, master dog and auto detection on hot. I don't uh, use the called pixel on the hot pixel removal. Um, I didn't see much benefit of running the called pixel uh, re removal. Uh, they just usually there aren't that many of them uh, or um, they just uh, average out during integration. This runs fast as well. Oh. 
this image was uh, done using my uh, usual uh, Starlight Express uh, 694 trees. CCD camera using uh, S John uh, nanometer filters uh, for H alpha and O3 uh, using a Sky Watcher 10 inch uh, Newtonian reflector with um, Paracore version 1 uh, comma corrector so it makes effectively length of around uh, focal length of around uh, 1.4 meters and uh, image scale of around 0 0.68 I think and basically I'm oversampling a bit and uh, on most nights I do not get the benefit of this uh, image scale but uh, on some nights it's uh, it, it, it's uh, visible the difference between the low F WHM uh, values and the high ones so what uh, and what FWHM is is basically spread function of uh, star itself so the bad nights the atmosphere is bubbling and boiling so the star is um, is smeared around a few pixels instead of uh, being a point of light. Um, so the, the more stable nights with a better atmosphere uh, results in uh, smaller stars and not only the stars but the details in the object itself are um, much better so it's not that much, it's not that blurred. of symmetric correction. The next thing we are going to do is reject some of the frames which uh, have uh, high eccentricity and, and high FWHM uh, values, so the frames which have uh, elongated stars and uh, bloated stars, or if some of the frames have uh, clouds in them. Or some other artifacts that wouldn't uh, uh, wouldn't uh, average out during integration. Um, so I'm just gonna run quickly uh, blink uh, for hopping through the frames I have. And this is the first time we'll see what data we have here. Well, you'll see. I have already seen. <laughs> So as you can see, after cosmetic correction, there aren't hot pixels probably at all. Well, there are some like here and this one, this one, this guy. So yeah, it's good. Let's go through the frames themselves. You can see some occasional hot pixels popping there, here and there, and the uh, changes in uh, signal to noise ratio also is visible. Well, at least for me, I'm not sure how much it's visible in the stream. Here and uh, here, you can see an image uh, uh, flipped. So what that means is that during imaging, the meridian was flipped. So just. We will fix that really easily. When we oh, and here we go, we can see some clouds rolling in, and the frame getting uh, lighter means that uh, the observing conditions uh, were worse, or we experienced clouds, or it was already morning and star uh, and the sun was uh, rising. And I think that's the case because it was like half past four in the morning in at the end of August. So yeah. 
and we can see the same one then uh, next night uh, we started imaging early and the, uh, the frames are uh, bright as well so they will start getting darker as we move further and currently I'm not seeing many issues with the frames uh, Okay, so we have some elongation, but um, I think I had some weird issue with the telescope the collimation, well, the, the alignment of the mirrors, uh, which resulted in some weird, weird thing, like uh, I had round stars in the corners, but I had elongated stars in the center, so it's really weird. Uh, I, I haven't still figured out what was the issue? Okay, so H alpha frames are pretty good. And oh, three frames. Um, I think I had some uh, focus issues, and now uh, you can see the stars themselves are really terrible here, so the edge shapes and the signal to noise ratio also is very bad uh, I started imaging early and with O3 uh, it's um, it, it lets in uh, more light pollution so and the sun <laughs> is light pollution as well so I started imaging early which resulted in uh, Four frames, not enough signal, and uh, I can see some issues with the focus as well. Maybe a little bit. Uh, these later frames, you can see the stars themselves bloating. So uh, those are bad. Yeah. This star, this star, is this. It's kind of small here, and previously it was like almost one and a half times larger. So those frames, unfortunately, aren't very good. But as if this is uh, all three, I might use some of them. The the, the best of worst, uh, so to speak, um, just because I need. Uh, to increase signal to noise ratio in the integrated result. Oh hey, I haven't seen the chat. Hey decoy, hey Jonathan. Welcome. Alright, so I'm not gonna remove any of the frames in the blink. I think um, we'll see the how bad they are during uh, subframe selection. I have some the approval uh, equation here and weighting equation here. Um, basically, I order my uh, frames. I'm saying that my frame is better than uh, the other by uh, calculating weight, and weight is calculated by this formula. So. Else to say about this uh, without delving uh, really deep into the details on what sh what each parameter is and why e one parameter should be prioritized over the other. Uh, but as I have all the settings here, I'll just click measure. And it's cool about this uh, process, using the process instead of the script, because there is a script for this thing as well, um, is that uh, it supports uh, multi-core, uh, so it's faster. And uh, also with uh, one-shot color images there are also issues with the script as it doesn't write the... Um, uh, as it doesn't it doesn't write the SFS weight to the DSLR images or something like that as I had some issues uh, when I wanted to uh, do drizzle integration. Oh yeah, 
yeah, so it doesn't write not the keyword, but it doesn't write the the, the uh, different uh, fits attribute which is required for Drizzle integration, and the process uh, does write it. So yeah. <coughs> so our, our goal here is uh, to reject any outliers. So reject the worst of the worst frames and uh, we'll, we will not keep all the best ones for sure because um, the waiting keyword gives us possibility to minimize its impact towards the uh, end result uh, towards the for uh, the frames. Um, so blindly rely on the results of the well, um, usually just over uh, what I have here manually as well and as I have set my subframe scale here I can actually see the real image scale in, in arc seconds here for my frames so these frames are from one night, I think, and and then the, they are worth from the other night, I think. Yeah, as you can see by the index. On 22nd, they were best. I have some good frames and some bad frames from both nights, so okay, that's interesting. And so the best frame is 1.7 you know, octagons of WHM, and the worst one is 2.5. Well, that's quite a difference, but I consider 2.5 being an average for me, uh, maybe a little bit towards the bad end, as you can see I have uh, the rejection uh, of uh, three and a half here, so I definitely don't want anything above three and a half, but uh, two and a half is kind of okay. Um, the median here is 2.1, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it will affect the end result, it will affect the image, um, and, but nothing I can do about it as uh, I have um, in, uh, some of these frames above too, so well, yeah, happens. Uh, and with eccentricity, um, I think I have uh, the higher eccentricity for the frames which have issue in the center of the frame, but. I think I'll still use this for a signal to noise ratio. As it's quite high, or the higher end for a signal. So yeah, I'll, I'll just approve all of these, and uh, I'll note this image the the best by the way, as uh, something for uh, the registration, uh, well, uh, the reference image, yeah, so all the other frames will be registered to this, and so let's just output this. Second and zero. Not this one, so I'll just mark it as reference. All right, that's clear, and let's uh, measure the L3 frames. <laughs> I 
I'm not a sorcerer, decoy. It's fine. You can ask questions, you can interrupt me anytime you want. I have plenty of time while these processes are running, so if you have any questions just shoot. So after uh, running uh, the subframe selector, we'll be doing the registration and um, I've seen benefit in doing Drizzle on the uh, Hidden Galaxy, but I think I won't do Drizzle here because of the median AWHM of 2.1. If it were lower towards like 1.7 or 1.8, I, I think I, I'd do it, but it, yeah, we'll just see. I'll, I definitely won't do the drizzle for O3 as these frames are pretty garbage with uh, three and a half and a higher WHM, so unfortunately, I wish I had more frames. Um, some of them are really good, actually, uh, but eccentricity is poor for the low FWHM, and <laughs> eccentricity is low for high FWHM. Well, that's sad. Um, as this one is pretty close to 3.5, I'll just use it, um, as I really need uh, frames for uh, signal-to-noise ratio, and unfortunately it will reduce the, the quality of integrated L3, but it's not that big of an issue as I'll only use L3 for uh, colors and not for the luminance, uh, so not for the details. Actually only needed for increasing the um, signal and uh, give up me the color differences, differences between each Nothing fancy here from uh, defaults uh, apart for uh, enable distortion correction. Just for those uh, corners, uh, it, it has slight impact uh, if I have um, some collimation issues in some of the frames. So it definitely doesn't make it anything worse. So. Doesn't matter if I have it enabled where I don't need it. And I'll just uh, take the generate drizzle data. Um, it shouldn't take longer than usual, so but but I will be able to test out the drizzle so to to decide if I want to drizzle the full full image of H alpha. Or not. And uh, I think I'll just uh, test out the drizzle on the, on the region of interest. So that shouldn't take too long.
I think I have some issues with the stream itself. I think it's struggling a little bit due to the high CPU usage. shouldn't take much longer, maybe just a little, uh, one more minute. frames and we'll be done then we'll be actually going to integration of the images and then processing at last all right we are done and decoy you should write a novel or something <laughs> uh, okay so I have that the six frames um, so I think I'll be using this process I have set up for images above 20, so which uh, th this means that um, I'll use rejection algorithm uh, linear fit clipping, and I'll use what I have um, by default in uh, linear fit low and high for rejection, and we'll adjust those uh, if necessary after integration. So as once more uh, process that's uh, CPU intensive though, so we might have some uh, stream issues a little bit more. Hopefully not too long and not too big of an issue. So I'm just I'm just waiting around and during these times uh, yeah, I sometimes think about uh, how my end result should uh, look like and what uh, what I want to achieve so as I have only H alpha and those 3d images uh, I'll be doing a bicolor 
and uh, instead of doing uh, some uh, regular uh, bicolor for where I create a synthetic uh, middle channel, so usually green, I'll be using this um, bit tricky pixel math formula for um, for uh, creating this bicolor image. Uh, which, uh, which, uh, where idea idea is using the strongest uh, strongest parts of the image in each of the channels. So, um, for example, for red, we'll be using as strongest par signals signal parts uh, from each alpha. For uh, uh, blue, we'll be using strongest uh, signal parts uh, from O3, and for green, we'll be using this uh, mix. Well, actually, all of these channels uh, are mixes, but um, um, but the um, the red one is pretty intense because of the H alpha, and the greenness and the blueness is mostly from the of three, um, the the there will be some orange and yellows, uh, which uh, are a result of a mixture of both of them. So th this actually creates like this color fire. So it, it will be mostly red and yellow, and then th there will be some other variations of some uh, slight blue and something like that. Okay, so done with each alpha integration, uh, we get four images. I'll just ignore the slope. Oh, oops. And the rejection high is looking weird. And the reason for this is because I selected not the register frames only, <laughs> and frames out of the subframe selector. Oops. So we'll have to redo this, fortunately. Uh, uh, this integration will, will look terrible. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like removing the stars. <laughs> yeah, it, that, that, that's what happens when the images are not registered. So it's why registration is a must. Sometimes happens when picking the wrong files. <laughs> well, it's not too bad with 36, but if you are integrating like 250 and it takes 30 something minutes, then it's not very cool. You know, 36 takes like a few minutes only, so not that big of an issue. Hopefully we'll get to um, processing of the image itself a little bit today. I think I'll be recording for another hour and, uh, and we'll have a session tomorrow as well. Unless tomorrow, uh, unless the clouds clear tomorrow, so if that happens, uh, I might stream, but the stream might be shorter or with interruptions due to um, looking after the gear. I wish it was clear tomorrow. I have some images to finish. with my 
10-inch Newton. I have two images in progress with my 5-inch Newt. And that's pretty much it, I think, from in progress stuff. I have a lot of stuff not processed yet, though. I have, I have a lot of work. And if I were to produce a processed image uh, once every two weeks, I'd have material for another six months. So yeah. Okay, let's look at this. So the rejection map is already looking much better and makes much more sense. And um, I think I won't be changing uh, anything with regards of rejection uh, of the linear fit high and for low now we have some things here and yeah, I won't be changing anything either I think it's good so the master of each alpha. As you can see, this part is really bright and what happens at the HDR expression here because uh, visual histogram stretch just flip uh, and you can see the stars are elongated a little bit here. Nothing I can do about it uh, right now. And the uh, weird thing is that the stars in the corners, they are round. And that's, that's been puzzling me for a little bit. And I think it was some kind of combination error. But it's really weird that now that the stars in the center are elongated. Stretching reveals the beauty. Oh yeah. Look at that bubble. So cool. I think I'll, I'll rotate it and flip it uh, for the end result. Not sure yet, but I think I will. better uh, than our stretch. Uh, let's go into preview. Yeah, look at that. It's a very cool object. And the convolution will do wonders here as well. It will be much sharper. And this part here, yeah, it will be. It will look very cool as well. Okay, so I'll just name this H alpha and integration of all three then. I think I'll, I will not run uh, Drizzle right now. I'll just uh, run the. I'll, I'll run Drizzle, but I'll run it uh, off stream and uh, because it it's gonna take a while probably at least 30 minutes or something and uh, I'll just show the result tomorrow or whenever uh, I stream next <coughs> so that all three should be much quicker as we have less files and I shouldn't have used the same integration settings I think uh, I'll just support as we have less files and uh, they are they need uh, stronger rejection, I'll just use uh, Winsorite Sigma clipping. So it's uh, designed for a smaller set of uh, images. And the Sigma low and high of 4, <coughs> so it will reject more um, and it's quicker. Thank <laughs> you. 
we'll do a quick combination of uh, channels to see how it looks like but um, the proper uh, proper uh, combination will be done with uh, starless images uh, I won't be using uh, stars for uh, colors here um, so we'll go through star removal process uh, for uh, both H-alpha and O3 and I think uh, we'll start with uh, the color image and then get back to processing each alpha for luminous at later date and right so strong rejection we get removed uh, got removed we removed a lot of uh, stuff around stars to the stars um, with this yeah so this is an issue and as this is a middle of image that means that we rejected some of the signal as well so I think we'll have to um, just re change some of the settings yeah I think uh, this area around here Maybe it's not that big of an issue uh, because uh, we'll use O3 only for color. But as it doesn't take long, I'll just uh, redo it with a uh, higher value here of 5, I think. It will be fine to just uh, keep the, pic uh, the rejection of pixels, but uh, not the signal. Some interesting stuff in H alpha image. So the signal is everywhere. We do not have any neutral background. Uh, that's cool. There are like these filaments on the bottom left side, which are looking very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how much you can see, but right here. So uh, they are not very bright, but they are quite interesting. In here. Also, this part is very really cool. Yeah, Deco, I'm not gonna crop it with a rule of thirds. For uh, it doesn't really apply for uh, ob for objects uh, which are not not that big and uh, should be left in the middle. Not gonna please the photography gods or whatever. All right. So now we can blink between the H alpha and O3 images to see the differences in uh, well, uh, how the uh, gases uh, differ. Uh, so it's very cool comparison. So you are imaging the same part of the sky but on a different filter and the difference is huge it's, it's, it's crazy you can, you can see stars remaining at the same place suddenly the gases around are just appearing out of nowhere seemingly which is so cool every time I'm blinking between the narrowband images like this uh, from different channels it's so awesome then you realize that the light from different um, um, 
materials. This uh, can be just filtered out. I love it. <clears throat> and as well, you can see the difference in uh, tightness of the stars themselves, and the data itself is uh, not not that strong. The, the signal is poorer, so the the, the graininess, uh, the noise, uh, it's clearly visible in the all three frames. And the stars in all three are also bloated. So uh, one of the reasons why I'm going to use uh, starless images for color is because of this. Because otherwise we'll have uh, these blue rings around the stars and it's gonna look ugly. And we don't want our image to look ugly or with rings around the stars. But I will do a quick combination, as I said before. And before that, I'll just save the project as we have a starting point for processing. So we finished pre-processing, and we'll start with processing of bubble nebula. First thing I'll do is crop the images as we have some rotation in the L3, as, at least in L3. In H alpha, we we'll also have some rotation, but it's not that strong and it's not that visible. And unfortunately, we'll have to cut some signal off as well, and that's the saddest, saddest part always because you don't want to lose the signal. It's really signal uh, here on the left this has got part of that filament on the bottom as well that's not too bad a little bit but yeah I can live with that the worst thing is that I had to cut off some of the signal here on the left <coughs> Yeah, 
so <laughs> I looked at the crop you made there well it could be done like with that kind of um, arrangement but um, maybe maybe not sure even if I were to do that I'd keep the original crop as I really don't want to lose any of the stuff around so just cropping stuff randomly it's not not how I roll <laughs> for me first thing is just have the data and display it uh, only after that comes uh, the appeal to people or something um, to the to make it uh, more aesthetically the to make the composition yeah the word I was looking for is composition and the, for me first thing is uh, detailed data and only second is a composition if I can make some composition uh, think of the composition before imaging I can frame the object the way I want it but not after I'm I don't want to sacrifice the data and crop it after I already image it so if I have a composition before I have decided on composition before imaging so then yeah but usually these kinds of objects where it's only a small part of the image uh, and it's it, it's usually left in the center so. but it's not a galaxy so and again Okay, uh, I saw some of the gradient here, uh, all three. Some people don't like it, but I think it's quite okay tool for such situations is using uh, automatic background extractor. It's a dynamic one. Uh, dynamic one takes a little bit more time, so I have presets here. Uh, you can just try them out. This one doesn't work. This one, oh, this one works. Um, still some uh, vignetting here, a darker patch here. So we can either try applying this again, or just running DB and applying this again. Kind of creates this black hole here, here. So yeah, and that's why we will have to use dynamic background extraction um, I'm just gonna place samples uh, randomly um, not really apply too much as I just want to get rid of those darker corners <coughs> Not an expert on dynamic background extraction, so don't tell anyone that something doesn't work if you're trying to use it the same way I'm using. I'm just mostly um, experimenting with it in these situations. Just, I, I just try to put some uh, uh, some of the boxes, no, some or some of the samples in the darker patches, and then some of them in the uh, lighter areas, which are seems like uh, they are just neutral background and not the nebula. We'll generate the, this. Um, background model to see how it looks whether this uh, doesn't reject some something that shouldn't be so, okay, I think I'm pretty happy with the placement of them
also background model looks good. Uh, we had this corner of the dock, it was the darkest one, so it seems to have done its job. And the end result, compared to what we have here, also looks okay. Maybe some this part and this part here are a little bit darker than they should be. So let's just place some of the sample here. Here. And maybe a little bit more. Okay. I think that will work. I think it's good, it's, it's fine. And yeah, what I did wrong was applying a dynamic background extractor to delinearized image. So I need just to redo it again. Uh, I need to save it quickly here. And redo it. Okay. So we are ready for combination. So by color combine. So this is the pixel map formula I was talking about earlier. And uh, yeah, how it, it reads. So if uh, for red color, if H alpha signal is stronger than 15%, uh, uh, we are taking H alpha. If it's uh, lower than 15. Well, not if lower than 15, and uh, then we are taking combination of H alpha and O3. And similar things happen for uh, green and blue with uh, some inverted uh, results, etc. So just let's see. As I said, we're gonna have some fiery colors and some blue greenish here. So, blue greenish color is strongest there where our free signal is strongest. And we can also create some of other combinations just to see how they look like, but uh, from my memory, they're that good. So let's say we will take the usual approach of uh, creating a synthetic green of uh, half of alpha and half of uh, of three, and, and results in this orange one. So the color uh, deviation, the color difference is not that uh, not not that big as in here as you can see we have red orange green blue here and in this one we only have orange and blue it, it doesn't look that good well maybe it, currently in this stage it looks more pleasing to the eye but we can do more stuff with this we can uh, manipulate the color much more so the end result will look much much better in this one. And let's try some other combinations like HOO. So it creates this really red green stuff. Um, probably this would be uh, somewhere towards a more realistic uh, representation of uh, how it should like to naked eye so that the 
red is each half and uh, all three is actually something between green and blue. <coughs> so it's it just doesn't look good. Yeah, we, we can put that. Okay, so we can green. But still, it's, I can't buy this company. Just too bleak. <coughs> okay, so um, just to uh, showcase uh, why we can do more stuff with this combination. I'll apply each alpha is luminous already here. It will make this whole image a little bit. Uh, smoother, uh, less noisy, and we can uh, abuse the Earth's transformation more because of that. Oh, yeah, so I forgot to apply a little bit of saturation, but uh, yeah, the end result is similar. So as you can see, the, the color variation is much more, much bigger than uh, the other uh, combinations. And as I said, why we want to create the starless images is because of these halos. And that these halos are a result of uh, high, the, the more loaded stars in L3 image. Really don't look good. And in some cases, it, it's looking like this, where color around the stars really and <coughs> all right so let's use some person information and see what you can get here um, we could uh, remove some of the green with the CNR but uh, recently I'm trying not to use a lot of it because it just removes a color which you can transform some to some different color, so removing it completely seems to uh, limit our possibilities uh, when you can just change it to different color, well, adjust it a little bit. So for example, you can adjust green here a little bit and get it more purple or more towards the yellow. I think I'm leaning a little bit more towards purple. It will create uh, more intense colors. You can also adjust other channels. Oh, yeah, this reducing blue seems to look good. so I'll just have to remove some of it. It won't be that much, probably around 40%. Yeah, so that green tint. I think I'll remove more of it, probably 60%. I think 
like uh, I want uh, to achieve the end result of the bubble being a little bit more blue. Not sure whether this is the way I should be doing that. Or maybe it is. So we reduced blue and uh, the shadows, increased in mid and increased in uh, eyes. And what reduction in shadows did for here is uh, re reduce the blue in the background, um, reducing blue in the highlights. here and yeah so this is a actually somewhat a preview of what we could expect uh, for end results uh, for the palette of end result um, I want to uh, convert green color towards uh, blue a little bit more I think uh, to have more colors overall <coughs> And I think we'll start with uh, start removal right now, and we'll start with the alpha. Yeah, let's just get rid of this. We can reproduce that result if we want any time. So it doesn't matter. If So, star removal. How we want to approach the star removal? There are a couple of methods that are possible, uh, but I'm actually require creating star mask. And there are a couple of ways to create a star mask. Star mask. Uh, you can do it manually. You can create mul multiple star masks uh, using star mask tool. You can create it using the multi scale median transform. And this is basically for re works really well for all the tiny stars and yeah, our method will be based on this one. For larger stars, maybe this one, this one, uh, maybe a couple of others, we might have to create the star mask using the star mask tool. And I'm going to rely on the scripts provided uh, by that guy whose name I cannot remember, but I showed the resources previously. It has uh, advanced storm mask script and it uh, uses uh, the MMP and then applies uh, convolution and some other steps. So just what we could achieve manually, we are going to use the script. Sorry about that, my mouth is drying out from all the talking. Yeah, and this is the sour mask that is script generated. And I'm not really sure I like it. As you can see, this script, as it flies on the MMD, it uses small scales for uh, finding the. Well, it, it, it removes all the scales except for small ones. 
and then it uses uh, the end result for star mask and then issue here is that it took outline of the bubble and the strong um, signal of that area for uh, star um, so yeah that doesn't really work for us have to adjust it somehow. Let's see. Let's use super transfer function to see what could be removed from here. Okay, so not only the bubble outline is taken here, but stronger nebula parts as well, so that's really bad. Uh, it's not terrible for, uh, the, for creating the color image, but we really do not want to lose the highlights. stars unfortunately so this is pretty going going to be pretty tricky to create a proper star mask for star removal clipping can we apply until we still have stars? Way too much, unfortunately. We're losing a lot of stars by clipping here. Let's see what this generates. And 
whether this is any better. Okay, interesting. It's not better, definitely. We need to get rid of more layers. So, let's get rid of layer 6. Better, a bit better, but we need to get rid of more layers, and I think we need to increase amount of layers to eight. And get rid of these. Yeah. Okay. Let's see quickly what we get here. Or you? Are we actually could apply? this uh, MLT on the end result maybe that would help okay so this is better kind of we get a lot uh, all the small stars and the outline of the bubble maybe we can use the clipping now finally and it would be enough and we have we didn't have to bother with uh, with adjusting the MLT in again. Nope, um, nope. Still doesn't help. Okay. What if I apply this again? A bit better. Still not. That big of an impact as I expected. But okay. Um, let's see. More layers. Let's keep only first two. Nope. Doesn't help. Damn it. Well, that certainly helps, but. It also reduces the size of the stars way too much. That could be fixed using other processes. How about we apply star mask on this? Small scale, not threshold, but uh, quite low actually, zero probably, and the smoothness we want to reduce to eight. And let's see what that creates. So we got rid of some of the outline for the nebula. Um then think we're losing stars, so that's good. Yeah, we are not losing any stars uh yet, but if we are going to clip uh, the nebula that we all start losing the stars okay so what can we do um, what can we do this 
screen what is going on what well that was weird um, okay one more option would be creating a range mask and then subtracting the end result Uh, 
basically only this slider. Um, remove stars from this image. And one thing that we'll use the end result of this uh, for uh, colors, but we will try to use the star mask that it generates. So it did a pretty decent job of um, of uh, removing the stars, but. Um, Subtract main image from reference image. And this is the star mask that it generated and used for star removal. We'll save it as diff without HA without stars. Let's see what we get here. at all. Yeah, so we have some background noise and yeah, it's fixable just by clipping. Not a problem at all. That's very sensitive. want to lose too much stuff so So we'll not use the end result directly. We want to use convolution just to uh, soften off, soften some of those edges that that, that tool created. Um, we'll use preview just to check the con convolution settings. We don't want to blow the stars themselves way too much and uh, just want to make it smoother. Just clip it a, it a little bit more. Also, we can see that it uh, wants to treat this area as a star, and we don't want that. Okay, so let's just clip it a little bit more.
even more. Alright. Uh, this stuff is what we want to avoid. Uh, uh, the masking of uh, background noise, basically. And then some of the signal areas as well, so... Um, here, I think it's unavoidable that we'll have constant for removing uh, some of these spots uh, around the bubble itself, especially here. And producing this uh, hot well, uh, as the star is only here, but uh, the mask extends all the way here. Oh, and here as well. So usually the parts of uh, this kind of nebula where uh, bright uh, part meets the darker, the, the shadows, uh, treated as a star. For some reason. I'm not sure why. Well, probably the the algorithms are written in such a way. So, yeah, we'll have to do some work with clone stem. Let's see if this effect any of the effect. Um, am I using the right mask? I'm just not clipping enough. Yeah, I think I'm not clipping enough. so it will get rid of them. Yeah, so I think we are good here with clipping. And what we want to do next is uh, get rid of the uh, masking in the areas we don't want to be masked. Um, so the easiest way I found to achieve that is uh, by using the clone stamp directly on this image and then just uh, copying the resulting uh, clone stamp instance from History Explorer to the mask itself. So we want to create a black image, completely black, black image, of the same size arm. Oh, no, not like this. Create new image. And we'll use this as a reference for uh, painting the mask. So we select target view and select the source view, the other window. And now we'll just be painting some of the stuff. We don't want this to be treated as a star. Like this, this, well, this, here as well, here, here, here. Nope. Um, this, start here as well. Edge. Not here, not here, not here. These are not 
stars. I think we got them all, more or less. Binary star mask for uh, star removal. Alright, so now we'll apply this result here. Bam. Done. And as you can see, now we don't have uh, masking in the areas that we do not want to have. Cool!
because the whole screen will be white. getting removed so we need to adjust the star mask a little bit in this place um, right I'll keep this as a reference uh, this do this um, apply this invert that and clone stamp Target source and get some enable the mask. I don't want this. And now with a bit more tricky stuff. So um, we need to reduce these parts. Um, so they wouldn't touch the edge of the bubble. This one it will be easy. Uh, with this one, uh, the star itself is super close. So uh, the way the stars are being removed, the surrounding pixels are being used for filling uh, the area where the star was. So it's taking the edge of the bubble and it's filling the part where the star was. So yeah, I think. We might even just uh, exclude this star from um, the defect map and uh, remove it manually with clone stamp or something. And here we can just adjust the mask itself a little bit. Start with this one as it will be the most easy to fix. It's for using. Yeah, so.
is good. This kind of stuff involves lots of manual work, but yeah, it's not something that that can be avoided actually. So, eh, the end result is worth it. So, I don't mind it. I really like working with my data, so I like working with other people's data as well. Just. To, Especially with the data that's been processed badly and can be improved on it, so I really like seeing what can be uh, gotten out of the data. Alright, so, uh, I think we'll just uh, adjust this formula to exclude really low uh, pixel values for stuff like this. So. We'll have uh, smaller uh, star masks all around, so with that will help with a situation like this. Alright, so let's get rid of that, land this there. And, okay, so. Let's find a really faint, let's see, star and see what values does it contain. So the value I'm looking at right here at the bottom, so 0 0.02, 0 0.15, then we have even lower, so I think I'll use threshold of around 0 0.001. And see what happens. Oops, I forgot to do that. I think we can increase the threshold even higher. Here. 
this artifact uh, that we had previously is gone with that star. Uh, yeah, this is looking okay, I guess. So, I think I'm gonna fix this a little bit with the uh, clone stamp. Let's use a bigger brush. Uh, probably this. Now I'm painting. Get some color, uh, but I think yeah, I'll leave these spikes, doesn't matter. We'll get some color just in a second. Um, uh, I'll try applying the same defect map as L3, but I think it's not gonna work as L3 might have some additional stars that this. Uh, yeah, we have some additional stars that this defect mag doesn't cover, so we'll have to create a separate uh, star mass for all uh, three. So, but we'll do that tomorrow. I'll just apply this defect mag quickly and uh, create a channel combination. Just because if you guys want to see the color, I might do. Uh, Stretch version. Uh, what we do? So, yeah, we have some stars that we need to remove while uh, using some different uh, defect map, and we'll have to just uh, get rid of these halos uh, as well with uh, some other techniques, uh, which we include noise reduction and uh, clone stamp. Uh, maybe just uh, bloating these uh, defect maps uh, a little bit more uh, so they would encompass the ringing as well so we'll see we'll see so for last thing today just quick combination for color from O3 are still annoying, but we'll fix that hopefully tomorrow or, or another day. But, uh, let's increase situation here right from the start. Get 
let's get rid of some of the green even more. There we go. So yeah. What we covered today was uh, pre-processing um, some preview on color combination, bicolor combination, and uh, star removal. So, for J at least. All three will continue next time, and we, we should cover full uh, color for uh, combination with the uh, luminance, uh, maybe even cover uh, some processing of the luminance, like uh, decomposition, uh, some of the noise reduction. So, thanks guys for watching who were watching live. Uh, for guys who will be watching this on YouTube, uh, waiting for comments, uh, insights, and yeah. I, I always welcome feedback and uh, feedback is the only tool to improve so and that's it I'll see you next time bye bye